Pastor. Greetings to all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's actually a privilege to come before the children of God and to worship and to sing his praises and to hear the word of God. See, every scripture is God breathed. And it's important that every prayer meeting, every worship service, we have the word spoken. Because the word is that gives us light. It has, it has life in it. This is one book that has changed many people's life throughout centuries. Many books were written. Many books have been lost. But this book, the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Bible, 66 books of the canon, has been uh, living and active and has changed lives for many, many, many decades, many, many centuries. And so we are here to hear the voice of God, not to just hear the word of a man, but we want to hear what God is speaking to his people. And this word is what encourages us, gives us life, gives us wisdom, how we should navigate through the sinful world. The Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Every path that we take, we have to be ordained by God and it has to be according to the scriptures. So without the word of God, we cannot come together and we can do many things. But if the preaching of the word of God is not there, it will be something that is very incomplete. Because the word of God gives us instruction of how we should live in the sinful world. Life is full of trials and tribulations. Life is full of temptations. Life is full of struggles. But God gives us grace and, grace, and grace comes through us in many ways. And one of the ways that grace comes to us is to hear the word of God spoken. So I'm very glad to be with you, brothers and sisters. Especially, I want to welcome back our brother, uh, Joseph and his family. They were away from us and we missed you, brother. And congratulations, uh, Sister Jewel, that you are back with us. Praise God for God's blessing upon you. A great milestone has been overcome. And so we thank God for this family and all of the families in the church. We are together, a small group of people. But the one peculiar thing that we have is that we are chosen of the Lord. We are God's people, God's called ones. Many, many, many people do not have this privilege. Brother, sister, think about it. Many people do not have this privilege to be called the children of God. You and I found this time in the morning to come together, to sit under God's word, to come under his presence and to worship him because we are children of the most high God, adopted into God's family. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. We love the Lord. And so our love among each other is greater because our father who's in heaven has joined us together and made us heirs and co-heirs with, with, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So while I'm sitting over here and speaking to you, it is not that I speak to you. It is not that somebody speaks to you and we cover a one hour or two hours of, 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 of our time together with, with some words spoken. But every word has to transform people's life. If a message is given and doesn't have any effect in people's life, you can consider that one hour a waste. So we have to hear what God is speaking to the church. And we don't want to hear man's voice. God's words, the voice is what we want to hear. We want to hear God, what God wants to he what the church to hear. And God's word comes to us through God's Holy Spirit. You know, we are just agents in God's hand. You and I are uh, instrument in God's hand, but the use of this instrument is done by God. God uses us as instrument in God's hand to extend God's kingdom work on this earth. So as we are group of people, small group of people, saved people of group of people, regenerated by God's grace, saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we come together, we are here to hear God's word. And I was going through so many passages and said, what should we speak? What should I speak? What is that the church needs? And I've been struggling through our pastor called me last Monday and said, Jason, brother, prepare for Saturday. And from that onwards, I'm in thinking and many things come into my mind, but I, I don't know what to speak. So I'm here all by grace. I can tell you that I stand or sit before you all by grace. And if it's God's grace that gives you, feeds you, nourishes you, and we want nourishment to our inner man and God's word, we have to eat and drink through it and be nourished. And that's what gives us strength to live Christian life, 
successful Christian life. So throughout the scriptures, there are many things that I could speak, but one place is where God stopped me and said, okay, let's see. And there was some peace when I was reading about it, there came some peace into my heart. Okay, maybe this is what God wants the church to hear. And so I'm going to take you back to Genesis chapter 28, and we are going to read a passage from that Bible, from that portion, uh, turn with me to Genesis chapter 28, and we are going to read from verse 10 onwards. Okay, and here's the word, Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and set out to Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with a stop reaching the heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will be sp spread out to the west and to the east to the north and to the south. All people on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and I will watch over you. Wherever you go, I'll bring you back in this land and I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Heavenly Father, your word, your people, and I am yours. Use this time, O oh Lord. Use me, O oh Lord, to declare the God God's word. And I pray, O oh Lord, you give us years to hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church this morning time. Father Lord, may you speak through me, O oh Lord. And Father Lord, prepare hearts to receive it, so that the words may fall on prepared soil, that it may yield fruit in season. Thank you, Lord, for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother and sister, it's so happy. So I'm so happy to stand, sit before you and uh, say this word to you. So this is a dream that Jacob had. And it says over here, Jacob left Beersheba and set out to Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped. A certain place in Jacob's time where he had to flee. You know the story of Jacob. Why is he fleeing? Because there is his brother trying to kill him or he has a grudge against him. He stole away his father's blessings from his older brother. He took away the birthright and he has been cunning and deceptive all his life. And now he's trying to run away because his brother is trying to kill him. There is fear in his heart. And so he's fleeing away. Here is a situation in Jacob's life that he's fleeing away from his brothers. He's away from his comfort zone. He's away from his homeland and running away to a place called Haran. And he's somewhere in the middle, in the middle of the wilderness. There is no place that he can, he can call his home. All around he sees it's all different, it's all new. It is not his comfort zone. It's an unknown place, but there is no help. He has only his memories to comfort him. And he has come in the middle of the night or to a point in life where he cannot go further. A certain place in the wilderness and it is night. Remember, brothers and sisters, like Jacob, we also have come to a certain point in our life where we had nobody to help us. We have difficulties. We may have problems in our life. But here is a time where Jacob is and we can also relate to him in many ways. Jacob is a man, a cunning man, running away from his family and in a place where he is in the middle of the night or he's at night, he cannot go further. He has stopped at, at night because he cannot continue further. You know, Jacob, a very smart guy, could do many things in different ways. But here comes a point where he has to stop. He cannot continue further. There is no friends for support. There is no relatives for support. Everybody has left him. He's all by himself. And he has come to a point in life where he is only by himself. At night, there is 
you know, you know the difficulties that we face in at night. This is a wilderness. There could be wild animals. There could be thieves. There could be many harms that can happen to him. And he is lying over there by himself. He says, when he reached a certain place, he stopped. Dear brothers and sisters, we may have many plans in our life. We may have five-year plan, 10-year plan. We may think about great things. We want to be educated. We want to have a job. We want to do many things. But there comes a time in our life there where we will stop because we cannot go any further. You know, in the busyness of life, we forget God. We do not have much to do when we have, when we do not have time for God when we are very busy in our daily life. We get up in the morning, we do our daily chores, we go to work, we go to school, we come back tired and then stress of the day, we try to work out things that needs to be done and we do not have time. We are very busy people. We do not have stuff. We have no time for God. You know, that's how many peoples of this world are. You know, God has chosen certain people to be called the children of God. And here comes Jacob. You know, it is, it is a promise that God gave Abraham. Abraham, come out of your people, your culture, your God. Come and walk before me blamelessly, and I will make you a great nation. That is a promise that God had given Abraham, his grandfather, Jacob's grandfather. But God is a God who never go backs out of his promise. He said, I will make your descendants as the sand of the seashore. And here is a time. Abraham was 99 years when he was called. He was called out and told to walk blamelessly. And Abraham left everything and walked faithfully before God. And then came Isaac at the very end of his life. Towards the end of his life, God gave him a son called Isaac. And here is Jacob, who is Isaac's son. God's promise is always true. He will make a plan. If he has promised you, he will always make whatever he has promised. He will always bring it to accomplishment. Here is Jacob. He doesn't know his God. He's always been with his parents, with his father, in a house, very comfortable. But God had orchestrated all these things in his life. So he has to flee away from his family. Many times we think that we are planning many things. We go to America. We want to go to other places. We want to set up our life in such a way but you think that you are doing it all this but behind it it is the hand of God you may not see God but it is all God's hand that is orchestrating God could not talk to Jacob if he was in his father's house he could not talk to Jacob if he was under his comfort of his mother here Jacob is running away there's nobody to help he's by himself it says further when he reached a certain place he stopped at the night before the sun had set Taking one of the stones there, he put under his head and lay down. There is nothing around. There is no blanket for him that he used to have all his life. That blanket is missing. That pillow is missing. That bed is missing. God has brought him to a place where he has nothing. He looked around for the comfortable place that he could find for the night. And he found a rock. A rock as pillow for the night and he goes to sleep. Dear brothers and sisters, you know, many times we think that we have comfortable life, but God will bring, a, bring, you, bring things into your life that is very hard for you. He will pull you out from your comfortable zone and bring you to a spot where you will have nothing but a rock for your pillow. Hard things. God will put you through hard things because, you know, God has a plan for you. You know, we may think, why did these things come into our life? You know, why, why, why is these things coming into our life? You know what? You have to get out of your comfort zone if God has to speak to you. You know about Hagar and her son. Hagar was sent by Abraham, go away, you and Ishmael, go away from here, and was given some food and some water and was sent away. But there came a time when the bread dried up or bread got over, the water got finished, and now they are in a place where there is nothing. They are in the middle of the wilderness. There's no help. There's nobody to help, and they have no food. They have no water. There is a certain point in your life where God will bring you so that God will open your heart so that you may look up and you may call upon the name of the Lord. Here comes Hagar and her son. There is a time in every moment people's life where you will be like Jacob, like Hagar, like many other people that you have nobody else to help you but a God to help you. You will not look up to God until you come to that point. 
Brothers and sisters, in your life, in our life, God has brought us to that point where we look to, look to God and call upon him when he reveals himself to us. Hagar was in that point where her son was about to die. She could not tolerate, she could not see her son dying. So she goes a stone throw away and falls down before God and cries out to God. A certain point in life, in Hagar's life, where she heard God's voice. You want to hear God's voice. You got to get out of the busyness of life. You have to come to a point where nobody will be able to help you. You and your God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that rejoiceth in him. Hagar cried out to the Lord God, I can't see my son dying. And there comes heaven, opens down an angel of God, comes down and tells her, hey, I am going to make him a great nation. Go and open. God opened her eyes and she should see a streams of water flowing. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to come to that point, a certain point. We have to stop and look upward and cry out to the Lord and then God will open doors for us. We may struggle. We may do many things in our own skills, in our own strength, in our own plan. God's, God, God, God will not help you if you are doing things according to your will. But there comes a point in everybody's life, in God's elect, God's chosen people, there comes a point in life where we will stop and we will look ahead, look upward. Um, you know, Hannah stopped, stopped to pray in the temple. There was a lot of time. Hannah had to go through ridiculous time in her life. Her rivals were mocking her because she did not have a son. It came to a point, she came to a point she could not bear it anymore. And see, she goes to the temple and she falls before God and she pours out her heart before God. A certain time, a certain place, she had to stop and she had to cry out to God and God heard her prayer. God opened her womb and God gave her a son by the name Samuel. Hallelujah. He became a great prophet. What God gives you, he blesses. Hallelujah. We may have many things of this world, but those things will disappear appear. Those blessings will go away. But what God gives stays forever. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. The Israelites were in Egypt and they were under great tribulation. They were under the yoke of the Egyptian. They were under, under burden, under slavery. They cried out to the Lord. They cried out to the Lord. They cried out to the Lord for 200 years. They cried out to the Lord, but no, no voice came from God. But God prepared a person by the name Moses. God prepared a person. He was born and he was raised up in the Pharaoh's palace. Hallelujah. But God had to pull him out of Pharaoh's palace and bring him to the wilderness. Hallelujah. In the wilderness, he was there. And there came a time, 40 years in the palace and 40 years in the wilderness. After 80 years, he went and he met with the Lord in front of the burning bush. Hallelujah. There is a time when you shall meet with the Lord. There is a time when God brings you in face to face and you shall hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter three, there is a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to weep and a time to laugh and a time to mourn and a time to dance. Hallelujah. Everything has a time in God's eyes. There's a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and time to throw away. Hallelujah. All think God makes all things beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. You think that you are in control? No, God is in control. Many times we think that we are the Lord of our life. I will do what I want. I will do the way I want it. Who's anybody to tell me? But God has a plan, a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, a plan to give you a hope and a future. And if that plan has to come into existence and has to be given to you, he has to pull you out of your comfort zone and has to bring to you a point where you have nothing. You have nothing, and then you will truly look to God. I'm sure Jacob in his lifetime heard about Jehovah God. I'm sure Abraham spoke to Isaac, and Isaac spoke to Jacob and his sons, and, and spoke about God. Many theoretical things we may know about God. But there has to be a point in life. All this theory is one thing. It has to turn into experiment. We have to experiment God. 
you know, and we cannot experience God if you are in your comfort zone. Because if there is a mom to help you, dad to help you, your pastor to help you, your brothers and sisters to help you, you will never be because they will always bail you out in certain ways and you will never need a God. But God will bring you out into a place where you say, man, there is nobody to help me. That is the time you really will pray to God and really God will answer your prayers. Jacob is in that, in that place. You know, brothers and sisters, I came into this country 21 years ago. I came to this country with two suitcases, as many of you have done. We came to this country. I had nobody over here. I had nobody. But we went to church. We heard God's word. We prayed and all that. I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, when I came out of my comfort zone, there's no mom, dad to call. They can't help you. You are in this country in a place that is far away from home. And you are in a place that, uh, you know, you, you are in a place where there is nothing that can help you. There's nobody. Everybody's out doing their thing. Early in the morning at four o'clock, when I was depressed, in the depression in the sense, I was not depressed, but I saw people. I, I came to America in 99 on March of 20, March 23rd or something. And it was a time of, uh, of, of great depression kind of a thing. Programmers, all technical guys were actually going back to India. And that is the time I'm coming over here for that Y2K project. And it was a time when there was no projects being done. And when I went into this room, this, this building, this home, that was three stories, okay? There was a basement, first floor, and a second floor. I went in there and traveling about 30 hours through, uh, you know, traveling 30 hours, I come around, around evening time to this house, and there is 25 guys in this house, people from Bangalore, Mumbai, and other places, all in this house. I'm carrying these two suitcases, and I go to the place, and I put my suitcase, one guy comes and tells me, hey, brother, oh, friend, don't put your suitcase over there. I sleep in that place. That's my place to sleep at night. This is 25 people in a house. People from Hyderabad, Bangalore, Mumbai, Delhi, name it. All types of people, all Indian Indians, okay, all Indians. We are in this room, no place to lay my bag. Then I take it upstairs. So oh, there also no place. Then I take it downstairs to the basement. There also everything is taken. No place to put my two suitcase. That's how this house was filled up. I got so tired after traveling 30 hours. I'm so tired. I just left my suitcase. Hey, whoever wants to put it wherever you have to place to put it, I'm not falling in. And that was my condition when I came to America. And uh, I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, depression all over the place. People did not know what to do. I could, I could see people calling out to different kinds of God. You know, that is the time that God brought me and said, you know what, here I am in a foreign land. There is nothing over here. There is no help. Everybody are out for themselves. And in the morning, early morning, I got up in the morning because during the other time, we don't have time. I opened my Bible and God spoke to me this word from Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will help you, I will strengthen you, and I will uphold you in my victory, in, your, in my victorious right hand. God said to me, fear not. See, this is where you taste and see that the Lord is good. When that word came into me, oh, my faith just increased, hallelujah. I said, I'm in a foreign land, far away from home, but God is still here. He hears my prayers. He knows who I am. He knows that I am in trouble. He knows there is no help, and he gave me the word that I need to hear. Fear not, for I am with you, hallelujah. And he has been with me all these 21 years of my life. Not a single day I lacked anything because he watched over me. Dear brothers and sisters, this God is your God too. This God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is your God too. He tells you, fear not, fear not, fear not, hallelujah. Praise be to God. We have a God who liveth. He is never a God who will turn away. He never forgets his promise, but he will bring you to that point, a certain point in your life where you will have nobody but you and your God, and you shall talk to him and he shall reveal himself to you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Here comes Jacob. Further we read, and he was sleeping with a pillow, has a rock as a pillow. This is a classic example of saying, you know, stuck between a hard place and a rock. You know that example? This is the place. He forgot his dunla bed, his pillows and all this. He is in a hard place to sleep and he has a rock. And here comes the, the, the dream that God reveals himself. It says in verse 12, Jacob had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on earth. 
with a stop reaching to heaven and the angel of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. So here comes a dream. See, God speaks many times through dreams, okay? You know, many times God, you know, we can speak to people many times. We speak the word of God. They may just rebuttal. They may just argue about it. You know, the classic example of God, you know, God spoke through, you know, the scripture, God spoke through dreams and visions in the Old Testament and New Testament too. But here comes a vision to, April, to, to, to Jacob. God is revealing himself. God has never revealed himself like this before. See, you know, God's spirit, you know, God speaks, uh, God, God speaks to us through vision. And I praise God for visions that people get. You know, God speaks to us through visions. Here is a dream that Jacob has, and he's lying down and he's seeing a stairway where angels are ascending and descending on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the stairway or the ladder. And up there at the very top is God the Father. And God the Father is revealing himself to Jacob and says what? I am the Lord, your God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. See, God introduces, this is the first encounter that Jacob is having with God, where God reveals himself to, 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 to Jacob. Dear brothers and sisters, we didn't choose God. God has chosen us. We were nothings. We were in the pit. We had no hope. We were not of royal blood. We didn't have any beauty. We had nothing. But God chose us. And praise be to God that he revealed himself. He chose us because he loved us. He loved us before the creation of the world. You and I are such privileged people because God chose to reveal himself to us. Here, Jacob did not run to know God. God, he was away, running away from his brother. He was running away from his family. But God took that as an occasion. God brought him to that spot where God revealed himself. Because God said to Abraham, I will make you your descendants as the sand of the sea. And God has to be true to his promise. He's a God who's always true to his promise. Man may turn away. Man may say some promises to you, but man may turn away, but you can always rely on God. He told me, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you in my victorious right hand. Tell you, brothers and sisters, till now, he has been upholding me in his victorious right hand. And I praise God because he's always true to his promise. And the promise is not just to you, but it is to a thousand generation of those who love the Lord. You love the Lord. Your children love the Lord. Their children love the Lord. From generation to generation, God's faithfulness is going to be true. Hallelujah. God promised Abraham, but now he is fulfilling his promise through his grandson, Jacob. And here God reveals himself and comes down from heaven and reveals himself and tells you, I am the Lord your God. Hallelujah. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. Praise God, brothers and sisters. We all have to have that vision. You know, we can go to a, we can be born in a Christian family. You know, we can be going to a church all of our life. But until and unless God reveals himself to us and calls you effectively, we cannot be useful instrument in God's hand. Every one of us has to have an encounter with God. We cannot claim that we were born in a Christian family, so we will be going to heaven. No, we cannot say that. Because we, 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 we are uh, doing certain things for God, we cannot say that we are. God has to effectually call you. Here comes Jacob. God is revealing himself. I am the Lord God of your father Abraham the God of Jacob, and I will give you the descendants of the land. And it says further, so here's God standing up on the uh, on top of the ladder, and there's angels descending up and down. Angels are ministering spirits, as you know, in the scriptures. God sends messengers, messages to angels. God sends his angels to protect you, that you may not fall. You, you know, the Bible says God sends angels concerning you so that you may not hit your leg against a stone and stumble and fall. So God sends his angels to protect you. Dear brothers and sisters, God watches over you. He sends his angels to protect you. So when you are in trouble, you may think there's nobody around you, but remember the angels of God has, is, 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 
is with you and they are there to protect you. No harm shall befall you. No, nothing will come against you without the knowledge and plan of God. Every hair of our head falls onto the ground. It cannot happen without the knowledge of God. God says you are like the pupil of God's eyes. You know, you are in God's hands. You are in the palm of hand. So God protects you. And the way he protects you, that he covers you with his angels. Hallelujah. The angels are ministering spirit. They are sent to minister to you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So angels descending from heaven and earth. He sees that. And then he sees a ladder. This ladder came from heaven. Hallelujah. This ladder did not originate in the earth. It came from heaven down to earth. Hallelujah. And, and Jacob was saying, oh Lord, you are up there. And this ladder where comes down and angels coming up and down. Dear brothers and sisters, it is God who chose us. It is God who wants to dwell, dwell with man. We did not choose him, but he came down. You know, man sinned and fell from grace. We went away from God, but God chose those his God's decision was it that man, God would come down and have fellowship with man. And God always wanted to have fellowship with man. Here comes a ladder from heaven, from heaven to the earth. And on top of the ladder is God. Hallelujah. And he's speaking to Jacob. I'm here to bless you. Hallelujah. I am the father. I am the God of your father, Abraham. And now I'm going to be your God, Jacob. And you walk blamelessly before me. Hallelujah. So here is Jacob seeing this dream and this ladder. Hallelujah. Praise be to God for the ladder. God has given us access to him. And one thing that we can tell is God is there and he has chosen us so that we can pray to him. Hallelujah. This ladder is no one other than we can tell this ladder is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because he has given us access to God the Father through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The ladder is the only way to God. The ladder represents Jesus Christ. The ladder came from heaven and God is the one who prepared the way to heaven. Hallelujah. We can cannot go to a, to God we can't we cannot go to God in our own ways we have to go through the ladder that God has given us and this ladder is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the Bible says for there is no God and there is there is there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man the man Jesus Christ hallelujah for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. There's only way, one way to go to heaven. And that way is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way the truth and the life. And no one can enter into the kingdom of God except through me. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, God has revealed his son to us and he has been given to us through the message of the gospel spoken to us. Hallelujah. It, it, nobody wants to depart by love. Nobody wants to love the Lord because everybody is, is, is in, in their own world wants to love the world. But there comes a point when God reveals himself and you cannot resist it. Hallelujah. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the only only way that you can go to heaven but it is by grace you are saved through faith and this is not for yourself it is a gift of God the Bible says so you are saved by grace alone through faith alone which is in Christ alone which is mentioned in the scriptures alone and all things happen for the glory of God alone salvation of your salvation from beginning till the end it is the work of God we have nothing to do in it it is God who chooses you, God who receives you, and God who gives you grace to climb this ladder until we reach the celestial city of God. Everyone, every true believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a road marked out for him. He has to run this race. He has to climb this ladder. From the earth, you climb this ladder of Jesus Christ. You walk in his footsteps until you, you reach the celestial city of God where God is. Hallelujah. Many people may first pursue different things in this world to reach God. They may pursue their education, thinking that the education that can save them. Some people think that their clothes can save them. Some people think that their fame, name, and other things can save them. Some people even think coming regularly to the church can save them. No, nothing can save them. You have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and walk in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then only you shall reach heaven the way that God has marked. Many ladders in this world, people may climb different, people have different religion, people different things that they do to, re, 
to have eternal life with God, but there's no eternity with God. You have only eternity with God when you're with Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. This vision that Abe, uh, Jacob had, may God give us that vision to hallelujah, that we may walk in this ladder. You know, this ladder is a ladder that you have to walk daily. You know, you start at step one and you cannot do this. You have to climb up the ladder. That means it is work. The Bible says, take, take time to be holy. You have to be holy. If you're approaching God's whole God, you have to be holy. Hallelujah. The Bible says, be holy for I am holy. This ladder, a spiritual ladder that God has given you and me, we have to climb on it daily. How do we climb this ladder? How do we reach heaven? How do we, reach, how do we reach God's presence, the celestial city of God, the heavenly Zion? How do we reach there? We reach there by walking, taking one step at a time on this ladder. Hallelujah. The first step is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Recognize him that he's the only way to heaven. Hallelujah. He's the only way that you can reach heaven. He's the only way that has access to God the Father. He is the one who, 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 who planned the salvation and Jesus Christ came into this world and accomplished the salvation. And you need the hate of the Holy Spirit. You need the unction of the Holy Spirit. You need the power of the Holy Spirit because I cannot do anything by my strength but I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Hallelujah. So this is the ladder that you have to walk and you have to climb this ladder on a daily basis. Hallelujah. How do you climb the ladder? You walk in his footsteps. You live in obedience to God. Every time you live in obedience to God, you are going higher in this ladder. You open the scripture in the middle of the night and you read and you spend time in the presence of the Lord. You are going higher in this ladder. Hallelujah. When you have fellowship with the saints, when you, have, when you come to church, and you come under the word of God, you are going higher in the ladder. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You are going higher in the ladder. Every time we have to go higher, we have to continue pursuing to grow in holiness. Hallelujah. You cannot be standstill. You cannot reach heaven if you are somewhere in the middle. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you do not pursue holiness, if you do not you use the means of grace. You cannot climb the ladder. In fact, you'll be going down the ladder. Some people try to climb the ladder. There is no Holy Spirit to help them. They go down the ladder and they, and they, are, and they are lost. Dear brothers and sisters, Christian life, we have to pursue it. Take time to be holy. Be holy for I am holy, the Bible says. You know, we cannot, re we cannot go into the presence of the Lord unless we live a holy and righteous life. When you come to church, Hear the word, apply the word into your life so that we may live holy and righteous life. We need grace. You know, there's a verse in Hebrew which says, you know what, you are in a race, in a race, and you are standing among great witnesses that are encouraging you. Run, run the race, run the race. There's encouragement coming through you from the scripture. When we sing songs, there are encouragement coming. Yes, it's hard work, but you have to climb this ladder and one day you shall reach the ladder at the very top where God shall receive you. You shall be reached out and God will receive you into his heaven. Well done, my faithful servant. Come and receive the blessing of the Lord. You shall be in heaven with God. And that's what we want to do. We don't want the riches of this world. We don't want name and fame of this world. Word, but I want to be in heaven with God. Hallelujah. That's what the vision we should have. God up in heaven and God has given us a ladder. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he has given you ways you can do it and one day you shall struggle through this ways and one day you shall reach the top of the ladder and where your Father in heaven shall receive you. Come my beloved. Come and enter my rest. And that's the greatest blessing that you and I want to have in this world. We don't want the riches of the world. Seek ye first the kingdom and it is we seek ye first the kingdom and all that things will follow after you seek first the kingdom this is fasting prayer many of our brothers and sisters are missing what i do not know what they are doing but you and i are here we are here to worship the lord it is a way that we climb the ladder every time we come for fellowship we encourage each other and we climb this ladder until we shall reach the very top and the lord shall receive us into his heaven and we shall be with over there and we shall be praising the lord hallelujah hallowed be thy name hallelujah we shall be saying holy be your name we shall worship god the way the cherubims worship they cover their wings they cover their feet with two wings with two wings they cover their face and with two wings they can only sing around saying holy 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 is the lord god almighty dear brothers and sisters 
that is the epic point that is place that we want there's three realities that we have to face and one reality is being born in this world the second reality is that we will pass away from this world but there's a third reality where we all have to stand before the judgment seat of god and give an account it is by grace it is all by grace that we can enter heaven may god give us that grace that we may have a vision that we may walk in the footsteps of the lord jesus christ pray that god bring us to a point where you shall reveal yourself to me in a way that i cannot deny you that i may walk in a way in your footsteps that i may receive the lord jesus christ and i may walk in his footsteps that i may walk in such a way that i shall receive the glory the crown of glory when i reach heaven hallelujah that god may receive me hallelujah you know when stephen was being stoned to death he opened his eyes towards the last moment of his life. He saw a vision. What did he see? He saw God the Father in heaven and on the right side, Jesus Christ, his son, standing to receive Stephen. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, one day we shall pass away from this world and one day we shall be in heaven. When we stand before the judgment and seat, may God call us by name and receive us into his heaven. There I shall be see my father, my father, my grandfather, my grandmother. They're all over there and we shall again rejoice with them. Hallelujah. This is a glorious hope that every brothers and sisters have over here. We may have struggles in this life, but do not worry. God is with you. He said, fear not for I am with you and he will be with you until the last day and he shall give you the strength. He who began a good Good work in you. He's able to take it to completion. Hallelujah. Father, brother, Lord, brothers and sisters, you have heard the word, a word that is from the scripture. And the Bible says every scripture is God breathed. Even from the book of Genesis, we can hear God's word and apply it into our life because Jacob was a man like us. If it applies to Jacob, it applies to us. And I praise God for visions and dreams that brothers and sisters receive from God even today. Hallelujah. And Father Lord, and, when, and our Father shall receive us into his heaven. Everyone has to have a hope. And the hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. We can walk in him and reach our heaven and, and be with our God in heaven. Dear brothers and sisters, can we sing that song that comes into our mind, you know, where he leads me, I will follow. There's a song, if you can sing with me, go ahead and sing with me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him all the way. Dear brothers and sisters, Jacob was led. He thought that he was going by himself. But there was a God behind him who pushed him out of his comfort zone. He was led. You and I are here, but God led you out, out of your comfort zone, into a place where you shall call upon the Lord and he shall reveal up himself to you. Our children are growing up. They're always under the comfort, but one day they have to leave and they have to leave the comfort zone. And all that you have been training them, all that you've been teaching them will all come into a practical life when they shall call upon God and God shall reveal themselves himself to them hallelujah we look forward and as i said the blessing of god is to a thousand generation of those who love the lord god has called us and we have to share this good news to the generation coming below after us and we have to spread the gospel this book has been changing lives never give up this book you may give up every other book but do not stop reading this book because in this book there is life and god speaks to you Brothers and sisters, may God bless you with this world. Wherever God leads you, go with him because he is with you. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, David said. Even I have to walk through the valley of bones, God is going to be with me. Wherever God leads me, he is going to be with me. And with that hope and with that trust in the Lord, let us lead our spiritual life. And as we pray, pray God, show me your glory. Show me your grace. Hallowed be your name. Let's pray. Let's sing and worship the Lord. We have time to pray. Let us pray, God, may your, your will be done in my life. Many times we got to go to God in prayer with our list of things that we want. Let all our list come to an end and let's say, God, use me for the extension of your kingdom. Lord, use me for your, your kingdom work. Use me the way you want. I so humble myself as a clay in the hand of a potter. I humble myself. God, use me and God shall use you 
for the extension of God's kingdom. All things happen for the glory of God. You and I are for the glory of God. So may God use you today and henceforth for the, God, for, for the, for the glory of God. May God bless you with his words.